In Russia, Islam constitutes the second largest religion. More than 14 million people, or about 10% of the population, identify themselves as Muslims. This community is by no means homogenous and is divided along ethnic, linguistic, and religious lines. There are members of several Muslim-majority ethnic groups who have been living on Russian territory for many centuries. The community also includes Muslim labor migrants who have relocated to Russia relatively recently, mostly from neighboring Central Asian republics. There are also ethnic Russians who embraced Islam as adults and formed their own groups of converts. Although the majority are adherents of Sunni Islam, Russia's Muslims follow provisions of different schools of Islamic law and cherish traditions that are unique to specific regions. Sufi Islam is particularly strong in the Caucasus, and Shia diasporas are visible in Russia's big cities. A dynamic and prominent group, Russia's Muslims historically have been an integral part of Russian society and continue to maintain an active presence in the political and social life of the country today. The first sizable Muslim population became incorporated into Russian territory as a result of colonial expansion. Lands in the Volga Basin, around the Ural Mountains, and western Siberia that hosted many Turkic-speaking Muslims were conquered already in the mid and late 16th century. Crimean Tatars became citizens of the rapidly growing empire in the 18th century. Territories of present-day Chechnya and Dagestan in the Caucasus and lands in Central Asia, were finally incorporated in the 19th century and expanded Russia's boundaries further to the south. The relationship between the dominant population, Orthodox Christians, and the colonized Muslims in Russia followed a different trajectory than in other European empires. Russia's Muslims did not live in territories overseas safely distant from the metropole. Instead, Christians and Muslims shared lands, engaged directly in trade, and developed cultural ties. Though, in the eyes of the Russian state, Muslims embodied an unruly minority that required strict governance and subordination. Practices of mass-forced conversion to Christianity and demolition of Muslim property were officially forbidden only in 1773, after Catherine the Great endorsed the policy of religious toleration. The sheer size of the Muslim population, however, compelled the Empress to devise long-term strategies to ensure the loyalty of her Muslim subjects. Although Islam, unlike Christianity, has no official clergy and no formal hierarchy, in 1788, Catherine the Great laid the groundwork for institutionalizing Islam by creating the Spiritual Assembly, also known as the Muftiyat. The institution had authority over Muslims living in central Russia and largely followed the model of the Russian Orthodox Church. The Muftiyat's functions included adapting Islamic law to Russian realities, training and appointment of the Muslim clergy, mosque building, and religious education. Later, additional Muftiyats were opened in Crimea and the Caucasus. The Soviet period witnessed further rapprochement between the state and official Muslim leaders and solidified the geographical division of the Islamic power centers. In the Russian Federation today, the historically Muslim-dominated regions constitute administrative units. Muslims who live in the republics of Chechnya, Dagestan, and Ingushetia in the Caucasus and in Tatarstan and Bashkortostan in the Volga Ural region enjoy special privileges. For instance, major Islamic religious holidays, such as the end of the fasting month of Ramadan, are regarded in these republics as national holidays. By contrast, in Crimea, the rights of local Muslims have been subject to systematic violation following the annexation of the peninsula by Russia in 2014. Due to internal migration and inflow of Muslim labor migrants, Sizable new communities emerged in Russia's big cities, such as Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Ekaterinburg, among others. In addition, the country's far north has witnessed significant growth of Muslim migrant populations, which has created a new phenomenon labeled by scholars as Polar Islam. These migrant communities are inherently multi-ethnic and multilingual, composed of members who are displaced from their traditional environments. 
As a result, religious practices in such migrant communities are constantly in flux and have to adapt to changing contexts. These communities face distinctive challenges, especially in the Arctic. Mosques need to be built with harsh weather conditions in mind, and the timing of prayers is adapted to the alternation between polar nights and polar days. In relations with the Russian state, Muslims are currently represented by more than 60 regional muftiats, some with overlapping coverage and competing agendas. However, only a few players act as dialogue partners to the state. For example, a powerful muftiat in Moscow, led by Ravil Gainuddin, is in direct competition with the muftiat in Ufa, led by Talgat Tajuddin, who has been in office since the 1980s. In the Caucasus, Ramzan Kadyrov, the head of Chechnya, de facto embodies both political and religious power. The ambiguous status of muftiats and their close ties to secular state structures has, by and large, limited their authority in the communities. The differences between these muftiats can probably best be seen in their reaction to the Russian attack on Ukraine. We find silence, a strong support for the Russian invasion, or neutrality. The neutrality comes from Dumaev, the Moscow Muftiate. They say, we hope the war will stop, share peace over these countries. The Muftiate of Tzdum, that is of the central spiritual administration of Talgat Tajuddin, is simply following the Putin line. There is another Muftiate of interest here, and that is Kurganov's new spiritual administration of Russia's Muslims, which also copies the phrases from Putin's speech, but does so a little more moderate. And Kurganov is a spoiler mufti. He's there in Moscow as well in order to take away from the attention that Gumerev in Moscow is, has been doing. At the same time, we are also having other Islamic actors in Russia that are very vocal, like Ramzan Kadyrov. He's spearheading the attack on Ukraine. With other words, a broad spectrum um, all connected to Islam, all in line with the Kremlin, not, not questioning the uh, Russian approach, but at the same time differentiating themselves in nuances. The other side of the coin has always to do with money, and that is they all depending on Kremlin money. That comes through the foundation for the support of Islamic culture, science and education. That was an organization that was set up in 2007 in order to end the stream of money coming in from the Middle East. This is an organization that decides which Mufti aid is to survive and which is getting the money. But at the same time, of course, there is also Ramzan Kadyrov uh, standing up as, as a major donor for supporting Islam all over Russia, not just in Chechnya. There are three main trends that characterize Russia's Islam today. One, securitization. Already in the 1990s, amid the military conflict in the Caucasus, the Russian state adopted legislation that began restricting religious freedoms. Especially after 9-11 and multiple terrorist attacks in Russia, the fear of Islamic radicalism came to dominate public policies toward Muslims. This trend has resulted in increased state surveillance of Muslim communities and institutions, prohibition of certain religious literature, and banning of religious groups deemed extremist. Coupled with political securitization are instances of Islamophobia manifested in negative and essentialized perceptions of Muslims. Recent surveys indicate that violence against people with Muslim backgrounds ranges from 30 to 60 percent of all ethnic violence and acts of vandalism are regularly committed against Muslim buildings. 2. Churchification in trying to govern a highly diverse Muslim community, the Russian state continues to impose models cultivated in relations with the Russian Orthodox Church. The strategy involves not only the administrative organization of Muslim parishes and appointment of the clergy, but also the language that is used to express and talk about Islam. As Russian becomes the new Muslim lingua franca, the church and muftiats converge on linguistic and symbolic levels. The muftiats also follow the path forged by the ROC in gradually challenging the secular principles of the Russian state. The Muslim elites participate in endorsing the state's conservative agenda both at home and abroad. 3. Urbanization 
With the urbanization of the Muslim population, Russia's cities have been transforming to accommodate the increasing needs of these communities. Halal restaurants, shops, and clinics are well integrated into the fabric of megalopolises. There are new Islam-themed events and interest clubs. Muslims have their own fashion shows, newspapers, and even specialized business and psychology coaches who operate with observance of religious prescriptions. This new infrastructure, in turn, engenders novel practices and results in creative interplays between Islamic tradition and modern innovations. Many global transformations that strongly affect the Muslim population worldwide have a comparable impact on Muslims in Russia. For instance, digitalization incites practices and forms of religious authority previously unknown. While transnational migration in search of employment challenges existing social networks, Russia's Muslims equally struggle against discrimination at work, experience religion-inspired violence, and challenge predominantly negative portrayals of Islam in the media. However, these trends develop in a context that is also very unique. Besides being extraordinarily multi-ethnic and multicultural, Russia's Islam has a long and turbulent history with the state and the church, a relationship that goes back to at least the 16th century. Yet these historically determined socioeconomic and political factors are not the only elements that play a role in how Muslim communities are organized and governed today. In addition, Russia's climate and geography continue to strongly influence the everyday life of Muslims living in the country.